Hi, I'm Melanie, and I'm here with Zelda Sheldon, the genius behind Love Your Voice, and we're going to talk about harmony today. Your favorite subject. Yes. Because you can go nerdy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Which... And we're going to have fun. We're going to... This is all based on this fantastic article, which we co-created, yes. starting with a beautiful conversation. Yes. Yeah. The conversation that created the article was so much fun. We had to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, harmony has to be heard. Yes. It's really hard to get it across on print yeah. or on the, you know, just on a, an article. Yeah. And it's yeah. so complex. Um, we had to, I had to do a lot of trimming of some really interesting things that there just wasn't room for in the article without it We could it being... have gone six volumes. Oh, I mean, there, there's a reason you can take, like, classes in college on this. <laughs> it's, it's a whole field of study. It's so cool. It's the intersection of so many things. And I'm clearly very nerdy about this, but Zelda, you have a really cool holistic approach that is really accessible to beginners. Like, you don't have to be a music theory expert to dive in on harmony. You don't even have to read music. Exactly. And a lovely example that I like to use all the time are the Beatles. And the Beatles were prolific, they were fantastic, their stuff was full of really fantastic harmonies, and yet they had no music theory at all. Um, their producer, George Martin, he had to do all of the music theory stuff with string sections and horn sections and you know different instruments, and they were just... Oh, well, that sounds pretty good then, doesn't it? You know, so it, for them, it was so innate. And so, yeah, so people learn to sing harmonies, I don't know, different ways. Like if you're in Africa, for example, you were surrounded with harmony. Mm -hmm. um, so I was watching a TV program just recently and uh, it was an African film and it was all about tribal Africa and it was so beautiful. Like there was no pianos, no modern instruments at all, nothing more than maybe a drum or a pipe. And yet there was all this beautiful, rich harmony from the whole of the community, the you know, little kids to the old, you know, the elders. It was just so beautiful. So, yeah, we can learn harmony uh, through our environment. Yeah, and I, I think we pretty much all do that. We maybe just don't know that we've done that and then mm -hmm. how to apply that yeah. as singers. Um, it can really feel like a magic trick seeing somebody just like pull a harmony out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but it's there. It's in your head. You just haven't realized it yet. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I learned to sing harmony listening to the Beatles and just listening to a whole bunch of songs and singing along with it. So mm -hmm. I'd be singing along like... Luckily, uh, the Beatles were on high rotation when I was a really little kid. And so I would be singing all these beautiful Beatles songs, and that's how I learned to sing harmony. And then later on, I, I got involved with the church, and I would make it a point not to sing the melody. I'd just sing the harmony, because uh, there was a lot of music and singing going on. you know. And so, yeah, that's how I learned. So what about you, Melanie? Pretty similar, and it seems to be a trend with a lot of harmony singers that I know where I was singing along with my favorite songs on the radio. Yeah. The melody got boring after a while. I wanted to sing the other parts and then yeah. not with a church choir, but my public school choir that I didn't even intend to join. I just got drafted into it. Um, and that was such a huge learning experience, especially because I think we're both altos generally mm -hmm. yep. in choral situations, um, which is either the most boring part or the most challenging, <laughs> depending on the piece, I think. I, yeah. You sing D a lot. You yeah. sing D a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Okay, so that's a great place to spring into a little tiny bit of theory. We're going to mm -hmm. do a little bit of nerding out, but um, we're going to make it really simple. Uh, uh, so what actually are these parts that we talked about, the soprano part, and the alto part, and you know, you've also heard of the tenor part, but we're just going to keep it really simple, just two parts here. So um, it's the soprano, and it's going to be the alto. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Western scale, which is uh, our pop music scale. 
And um, you probably know about this with the solfege. Uh, so it's do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to go with the number system because that makes it really super easy. Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the scale. Now, the melody can only sing one note at a time, right? So the melody is going to be, I don't know, some, a lot of people think, well, where is the melody? Does it have to start at one? No. It can start at five or two or three. It can start at any number. All right, I don't want to go too nerdy here. I just want to keep it nice and simple. Okay. We could. <laughs> we could go really nerdy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do a quick nerd. So I, what I want to expand on with this is we talked about this one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, the melody, and then all of the chords that support the melody, which chords is harmony, Yes. are created by those notes. Yes. So if you, we called it the key, mm -hmm. um, or we've called it, it is the key. <laughs> it's not called the key. It is the key. So you have like a limited palette to pick from. I mean, obviously you can have notes that aren't in the palette to add extra color, but we're not going to talk about that today. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can sing a scale, you can sing harmony and the melody. You have all of the colors you're going to need to paint with. Yes. So the melody can be anything that the, sorry, the, the harmony, we'll pick that up. The harmony can be anything that the melody isn't doing. Mm -hmm. Right? So, if you're starting on a one, let's say, for example, you're starting on the one, and that's your melody note. So let's find a C. One, one. So let's sing all of those numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Now, we're going to do one, three, five. That is the most common chord, right? Mm -hmm. One, three, five. Five. Mm -hmm. Right. One, three, five. Now, we are both singing like a melody, mm -hmm. but now we're going to harmonize. I'm going to stay on the one. Melanie is going to say, oh, she's going to sing the three. Here we go. One, three. That sounds beautiful. Let's do it again. One, three. Let's do one and five. One, five. Oh, sounds so good. Let's do that again. One, five. So there is harmony in a nutshell. One, three, five. How easy is that? Now, most, the most common, the easiest would be the three. Um, so you're singing that one, three, that is a very easy way for our ear to pick that up. Our ear seems to love the three. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our ear loves the three and it's maybe the most common yeah. distance from the melody mm -hmm. in American pop music. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's the closest close harmony. Yeah. yeah. And in a chord, the three is what tells you whether it's major or minor. So there's a lot of information there. It adds a lot of color. That five just adds stability. Yes. So the three is extra exciting for our ears. Now you've brought up a really interesting point, like our the minor and the major. Mm -hmm. What is that? Because that has something to do with harmony as well. So major, I always like to say, it's the happy. It's the happy sound, one, three, five. But when we're going to minor it, one, three, five. Yeah? yeah, so you can actually make it go really sad. Let's try it. Just let's nerd out just a little bit. Okay. Let's start, do a, a minor third. Oh, I hope I don't blow this. <laughs> do you want to start with a word? <laughs> no, sure. <laughs> One, three. Oh, isn't that sad? Yeah. Yeah. So you can do that. So you, you, when you're doing your three, uh, you can make it sad or happy. Yeah. yeah, and the choice of whether it's sad or happy will have a lot to do with 
the chord that maybe your instrument that's supporting you is playing, yeah. if you're not just a cappella. Mm-hmm. Um, should we talk about my super, super nerdy exercise with the chords? Go on, go on, go on. Uh, yeah. So my I did a lot of ear training in college, mm-hmm. and one that I found really helpful for singing harmony is learning to sing all of the chords in a scale. So we talked about scale is all the colors you have to paint with. Mm-hmm. A chord is usually one, three, five, and so if you just shift those distances up the scale, you get a bunch of different chords. Okay. And those are the standard chords that we use to write music. Um, so <laughs> the exercise, oh, it's so uncomfortable doing it on camera. Uh, the exercise <laughs> I learned in college was to sing all those chords. So no pressure. Um, let me just get, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So, I like solfege. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. I like solfege a lot for <laughs> reasons we don't need to go into. Um, so this exercise could it be in one two three four five six seven eight. That might blow my mind. Oh, I, think so. <laughs> oh, I, <think> so. <laughs> so, I can try. I, I it's so ingrained in me. All right, do it, do it. So we're gonna sing all of the chords. So do mi sol mi do re fa la fa re mi sol ti sol mi fa la do la fa sol ti re ti sol. Everyone, that was awesome. <laughs> I don't even know how you get all of that, like memorize all those solfege. That you is crazy. You fail a course if you don't get it right. Oh, my <laughs> so goodness. You do it. Oh my but goodness. But those are, yeah. those chords are happening under the melody. Mm-hmm. And when we're choosing a harmony note, we generally want to choose one of those notes mm-hmm. that are matched together in those trios. Yeah. Um, so I find that really helpful, but you don't need to do what I just did to nail that. Well, that was amazing, amazing skill. Let's simplify it because we're going to actually do a, a little exercise yeah. now. We're going to simplify it and we're going to do one, three, five, two, four, six. So let's oh. just do that. I'll try. <laughs> okay. One. I'm, I'm still singing uh, C as one, I think. I'd, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. One, three, five, two, four, six. One, three, five, two, four, six. Three, five, seven. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Four, six, one. That's great. I, I, yeah, the numbers are, are hard for me because I did <laughs> not learn with that. Um, you did really well. So in a nutshell, that's what we're talking about. We're just talking about these notes that sound nice going together around the melody, and that is going to be the harmony, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, now, what should we talk about next? Well, we have some two exercises that you teach Mm -hmm. written in the article that are probably a way better place to start, or definitely a way better place to start. Ear training. Then Yes, ear Ear training training exercises. So... Earlier, you know, we sang one, three, five against each other. Mm-hmm. How do you learn to find those notes? Mm. Um, we wrote, I wrote the exercises out in text, but it's kind of meaningless unless you hear it. So would you demonstrate those? Right. Okay. So we're going to go for the numbers, not the solfege. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to, uh, one is going to be our starting note. One, one, two, one. One, two, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wow, and that's also a breathing exercise as well because if you can keep all of that breath going that slow on all of those eight notes. And then you can start eight. Eight seven eight Ooh. eight seven six seven eight eight seven six five six seven eight eight seven six five four five six seven eight eight seven six five four three four 
five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. And I ran out of breath. I got that last one. <laughs> I did a little catch breath. <laughs> I, I heard it. So there we have it. That's ear training. And then you can do one, uh, you can actually make it uh, the intervals. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me explain an interval. So an interval is the distance between two notes. And in this case, we were talking about a whole note mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a half note. And that would be all those accidentals, the sharps and flats. So we've got the one, two, or the do, re. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole step interval. Now, we were doing that uh, set of eight intervals, eight notes, whole steps, but you can jump it. You can go one, one, two, one, one, three, one, one, four, one, one, five, one, one, six, one, one, seven, one, one, eight, one. Yeah, so that is another way. So you're actually expanding that. It's going from just the single one step going to um, multiple steps. Yeah, and yeah. that one step exercise is so helpful for that because you can be hearing all the steps in between in your head yeah. as you get to that interval. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all ultimately muscle memory. Yeah, um, This is... It can be really hard when you start learning something like this, mm -hmm. but I think we could maybe both say it was really hard for both of us at some point. <laughs> I think um, if you're prepared to just be a child, you know how um, you know children just love to play, and just allow yourself to just fall over and then just you know when I'm doing my uh, coaching, I always allow my students just I want you to splat. I don't want you to not sing. I don't want you to just, you know, sort of, oh, no, I'm just about to make a mistake so I won't do anything. I'd rather the mistake be made so that you can correct it, so that you can go back and do it again. Yeah, Yeah, and yeah. in a professional setting, not stopping is the key <laughs> to, yeah. to not showing your mistakes. Most people will forgive a lot if you just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I had an ear training class where it was jazz harmony and it was similar to that exercise I demonstrated with the chords, but it was a whole chord progression and there were all those accidentals in there. And I got completely lost halfway through. This was my final exam. And I managed to get back to the, the root chord, which I was supposed to end on. And that was the only reason I passed. My teacher was like, you didn't stop, which is great. And I've never seen anybody get that out of tune and then get back to one. So good job, I guess. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it yeah. Was, wasn't an A, but I didn't fail. <laughs> no, a really yeah. great lesson. And, you know, that brings up a really interesting subject. Um, and that is the one, the mm. root. So um, it's so important to be able to identify what the one is uh, and this is what I, I coach with my, my students. So when we're learning a new song, I will take them through, okay, what is this key? What is the key of this song? Because keys uh, are very important because oh, yeah. you might be singing a song that is written in a male key and uh, you're, you're, it, it's, it's not a key for a woman. So, you know, it's really important. So um, it's another subject altogether, but... In this ear training that we're just talking about, that one, one, two, one, one, if you can just find that one, really find out what that one is. Uh, and if you're doing um, listening, listening to the radio or listening to, do people listen to music on the radio anymore? Or, anyway, <laughs> listening <is> to <laughs> wherever. <laughs> Try to listen with the one in mind uh, and so that is the, the, also known as the tonic or the root note. And so it's the note uh, that it settles to. Mm -hmm. Usually you'll find what the key of the song is 99.9% .9 of the time is where the song resolves at the end or where it resolves at a chorus. So that is where you'll find the one note. So listen to that one note 
Um, and then you'll go, oh, okay, so this is, if, if I've identified the key, then you can go, okay, what's the three? What is the three note? And then what is the five note? So they're the easiest notes to find, the one, the three, and the five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that finding that root note um, by feeling, it's going to feel like you've landed, mm-hmm. um, which is a great way to know that you've found it. It's mm-hmm. like, if, I, if you can hum that under the entire song yeah and it sounds like it fits yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably the right note exactly um, it's really funny there in a couple ear training classes i've seen people play these intervals that and then not resolve to the one and then the entire class will just sing the one because it <laughs> feels so <laughs> yes. wrong that yeah. it doesn't go back there mm. so you're likely going to be drawn to that note Mm-hmm. Um, whether you realize it or not. Yeah, and we love a good resolution. Mm-hmm. So um, what I'm wanting to do now before we finish is we're going to talk about the easiest harmony note that you can ever sing. Yes. And uh, it's a fantastic Beatles song. Does everyone know I love the Beatles by now? Uh, and this is one of my favorite Beatles songs. Uh, can just remember doing a class with this awesome teacher Pat Patterson and he will just talk about love 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 <laughs> love 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 and I'm going and you think what's he talking about but he's actually singing or he's, he's speaking the words of this Beatles song and that's all they've got just one one word love mm. love 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 is all you need so it just seems to go with it because we're going to find a one note to go with this one word. So it's in the key of C. It's in the key of C. Okay, did you hear that? Right, now the, the um, melody is not going to do a one. The melody is going to go love. One, two, three. The melody is starting on the three. So we've mm-hmm. found the one note. The, the, the key mm-hmm. is one. The, the melody is going three. Love, 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 right? Yes. All right, would you like to do love, love, love? Sure. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sing the five. And the five is going to go over this whole uh, love, 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 love. We'll finish mm-hmm. there, okay? All right. All right. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, love, 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 love. Okay, that's all right. Ready? Right. One, two, three. Love, 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 love. We're, we're staying on love, 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 oh. love, love, love. Love, oh. love, love. Oh my gosh! Now I look like a fool who doesn't no, know no, the we're gonna, we're gonna do this again. Okay. Okay. But right this time. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> love, love, love. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to do love, 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 love. All right, now I'm going to okay. go for the five. Okay. okay, one, two, three, four. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Bom, 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 bom. Bom, bom. Okay, so that's it. That yeah. is this beautiful introduction to love, love, love. Love is all you need. So I just picked one note, which was the five. And so if you are looking for an easy harmony, a one note harmony, go for the five. Yeah, and yeah. while you were just singing one note, we got some really cool tensions in oh, there. Yeah. There's a little bit of like nice dissonance. Yeah. Um, a one note harmony can sometimes make the most complex sound. Oh, yeah. And yeah. just to touch on, at the end of the article, we talk a little bit about singing harmony, not just from a theoretical sense, but if you're like doing it professionally or mm-hmm. with the group. Um, and a big thing for me, and I think for you too, is keep it simple. Absolutely. The less movement, the better, in my opinion, but mm. not everybody agrees with that. Yeah, and there's nothing more simple than a one-note harmony. 
Absolutely. So, Melanie, this has been a really good conversation. This has been great. Yeah. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that if you haven't read the article yet that you will check us out. Um, you can find it on our website, which is loveyourvoice.coach. Yes, if you want to know something else about harmony, like the different types of harmony for different types of music, let us know in a comment, either on this video or over on the article, send us an email. I want to know what you want to know, and we'd love to talk about it again, because this could be a really long conversation. If and we let a ourselves. nerdy fun one too. <laughs> so thank you, Melanie. Uh, this has been great. So um, that's about it. Thanks for joining, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Don't forget, love your voice. Loveyourvoice.coach. Yes.